We're back on that brush train, baby. It is the most wonderful time of the year. We got good food, we got holidays, we got presents, we've got, but most importantly, we've got 67 degrees ambient temperature in my garage for about three motherfucking months. It's a perfect time for non lager yeast strains. What does that include? A lot. Red wine, ales. But for this video, you saw the title. There's no clickbait here, brages and brajettes. We are here so I can ask you if you can put me on your MySpace top eight. We are here because we want to make hard seltzers. And we're gonna make three. Hard seltzers are as popular as ever. They're still just too damn expensive. Everybody who everybody who knows how to make hard seltzers knows that it's about half of what it would take to brew a five gallon batch of beer. But the real kicker is that it's not labor intensive at all. There's no 60 minute mash. There's no 45 minute Vorloff recirculation. There's no sparge. There's no 60 minute boil. There's very little cleanup. I once made three batches, three five gallon batches in one day, and it was still probably about the same time as a five gallon brew day, a five gallon all grain brew day. You might've already tried it. It's very common that you had stuck fermentation or it just looked way too yellowy, or maybe your batch came out too juicy. It didn't taste like a white claw clone, it tasted more like juice. That is not a hard seltzer. We actually made this video in the past. All the brages came over. We overthought it. We used real lemons. We used real lemon juice. That's a big no-no. We had a stuck fermentation and I added some yeast nutrient and another yeast packet that we didn't put in the video and it got confusing. If you watched that video and had problems with it, just uh, blame uh, Maury and Donnie. Easy fix. Okay, so we're gonna make three batches today. Chug a beer, NBC right now. And they're all gonna be a little bit different, mainly separated by the yeast strains. We're gonna have some constants and we're gonna have some variables. All the water is gonna be the same. Distilled, we're just going with distilled soft water, all of the same brand. Well water or city water is gonna be too hard, which is gonna contribute in that cloudy and, and yellowy look. Is that a word, yellowy? Let me know in the comment section how much you think I weigh. Two of the batches are gonna be cane sugar and one of the batches is going to be corn sugar. Table sugar versus dextrose. We're gonna see if that's a factor. Three different yeasts. Here's what we did last time. Here's one of the ways that we did it wrong. Do not use real fruit or puree. We are not making juice. You're watching this video because we're making a White Claw clone. You think White Claw uses puree? Fuck no. They use extract all the way. You can just taste it. And if we're going to use extract, we're going to use the best in the game, fam. None other than Olive Nation, Braj. We've used these in the past. We've gotten perfect results. There's no more brew stores. All the good brew stores went out of business. Thank God for good websites and fast shipping. Olive Nation has great credibility on Amazon with extremely affordable prices but their prices are actually cheaper on their website. This is who we buy from, for uh, alcohol-based extracts, vanilla beans, specialty grains. I get, uh, I get two row in bulk. All the flavors that we wanted to make. Key lime, pineapple, blackberry, they got it, and more. Green apple, apricot, raspberry. It's a good website, it's a good homebrewing website. You name it fam, they got it. And if I'm sounding too much like a salesman right now, it's because I am, but their stuff is great. Check them out, olivenation.com, and I'll let you in on a little secret. Go to their website right now and use promo code H4L20 and you get 20% off your order. But you keep that between me and you. If you tell anybody, I'll get you. Same way Paul Bunyan got that blue ox. Okay, cool, that's it. Enough of my shitty face. Let's fire up the anvil, bro. hell is it? Does anybody even know? Scored mine off Amazon. Kind of pricey for dry yeast, but let the experimentation commence. Turbo yeast is often called distiller's yeast. Word around the campfires that you can get up to 20% alcohol by volume with this yeast. You've probably heard of double IPA, maybe even triple IPA, but can you say octuple IPA? All right, five gallons of distilled water. We do not need six. We're not going to be boiling a gallon off. We're not even going to bring it to a boil. Just get it over 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now stir in your four pounds of cane sugar. Check it out. No camera guy today. Just using this external monitor on its own tripod. This video is COVID friendly. These CH table sugar bags already come in increments of four pounds, which is perfect for shooting for a 5% ABV social sparkler. No water additions or any yeast nutrient. I just want to see what the turbo yeast will do with nothing except table sugar. Let's kill the heat, stir it in for a good five minutes, toss in your chiller, connect it to a pre-chiller, just keep stirring till we're under 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The more you stir, the faster you're going to cool down. Just like Campbell's soup, baby. Always have a strong ice game, fam. A one gallon jug of frozen water is eight pounds of ice. Ice up, Braj. Always remember, one Braj is trash is another Barrage's chill system. Get on that star stand game, pitch the yeast. Click in the top corner of the screen if you want to learn how to make these $7 fermenters. Original gravity, 1040. Boom. Within 20 minutes, the airlock was going AWOL. So far, 
So good. The next day. Next step. Next step. <laughs> What's the next step? Yeah, I got your next step right here. Go over to Spotify and check out the Brajcast. It's serious beer talk. We're gonna start uploading a ton of content. Learn how to pull chicks, fire your boss, not be able to afford a Mach 3 razor like me, how to hold in your stomach better for wedding photos. Follow the Brajcast on Spotify. I'm not asking, I'm telling. All right, but let's check out our concoction. The next day, let's check it out. Head into the garage. Let's pull a gravity reading. 10 zero, zero. Crazy how that worked in one day, 24 hours. 5.25 ABV. Give it a taste. It smelled, looked, and tasted just like sake. It didn't taste like hard seltzers. Kind of a bummer. But then the light bulb just went off. Grow brain, CH. We just made 5% sake in one day. Do eight pounds of sugar next time. Get it up to 10%. Sell it all day at your shitty restaurant. Enter a sake competition. Win first place. Buy me a burrito. It's called even. We'll talk about this more at the end of the video. We'll circle back. We can bring this back to hard seltzer. I'll tell you how at the end. But let's get on this next batch. Red Star Cuvées. It is not difficult at all to find. Homebrew stores should have it if they're still in business. And if not, it's dry yeast. So just buy it off Amazon. It is the most affordable yeast you will ever own. It says on the package that it works and it's excellent for restarting stuck fermentation. Sold. This is the yeast that we used in the past. This is how I make my hard seltzers. Make sure your scale game is strong, fam. I like to use the scale for the ounces and the pounds. And then I like to use a smaller one for water adjustments and, and uh, yeast nutrients. Same as before. Five gallons of the same water at 200-ish degrees. Still using four pounds cane sugar. Table sugar, granulated sugar, however you want to call it. Let's weigh out three grams DAP, diammonium phosphate, and three grams yeast nutrient. Six grams total. This is to prevent us from getting a stuck fermentation. And you would know this if you followed the broadcast every Wednesday night. It's a live virtual happy hour. Hang out, shoot the shit, talk with fellow brewers, have fellow brewers on, have business owners on. Check it out. Every Wednesday night, there's a chat. Say what's up. Troll us. Let us know if you like Subway or Quiznos better. Okay, that's the last thing I'm plugging. But add me on MySpace, Plenty of Fish, Tumblr, Discord, Patreon, Casting Couch, OnlyFans. All right, so let's get to 200. Let's toss in our sugar and our DAP and yeast nutrient. Give it a good stir, five minutes. Heat, chill, clean, heat, chill, clean, heat, chill, clean. Hard seltzers are nothing compared to a brew day. Crank them out. Chill to 70, we're gonna throw in two packets. Just cause uh, I've never done it before. And this yeast is like 70 cents a pack. Shit, throwing three yeast. Let's check our gravity, our OG. It's gonna be the same as the first batch. Nothing should have changed for that. Five gallons of water with four pounds of cane sugar. Congratulations, you've made it far in the video. 98 for All right, salt NBC fam. Okay, two days later. I know this yeast and I know this process because I've done it before. Let's pull a reading. It gets to about 1020 and then it just dies out. That was the problem in the last video we made. Everybody's stuck with about a 2.5 alcohol by volume hard seltzer. It tastes good, but it tastes too candy-ish. There's still too much sugar in there. Here's the problem with stuck fermentations with hard seltzers. We are fermenting with 100% sugar, not wort. Wort has maltose, nutrients, minerals, carbohydrates. When brewing with 100% table sugar, we need to give it a ton of help to keep it going. Beer yeast alone wasn't made for this. Get your sanitized bottle out. Hit it with another yeast packet and three more grams of DAP, which is pretty much nitrogen that will help activate the yeast. And boom, just like that, the yeast is happy again. But we did have to open it up. Just keep watching until we get onto our third yeast. Two more days later, and we hit our final gravity. Finally got our 5% beer. No sulfur smell, no baby turtle farts, but it's kind of cloudy. It's not clear like White Claw, but we can fix that. Just keep watching. Keep that yeast nutrient game strong, fam. Keep that stuff airtight, and it's gonna last longer than your marriage. We're gonna cold crash this for a night, and let's talk about the real reason why we're here. My local homebrew stores do not have this yeast, nor can I get it on Amazon. I'm in San Diego, I can get White Labs yeast. They're in San Diego, I can get pretty much any strain that I want. But Omega Yeast Laboratory is in Chicago. If I wanna get it, I have to order it online. It's liquid, so you'd wanna do one day delivery and you'd wanna do a couple ice packets. You would definitely wanna do overnight. The more the shipping guys have my product, the less peace of mind that I have. I've seen Ace Ventura, you have too. So with yeast, shipping, ice packets, one day shipping, it's gonna be about 25, 30 bucks. But I got Genus Brewing looking out for me. They sent me this yeast, two packets of ice, and he included two beers in there. Shout out to Peter out there, AKA Sleeveless in Seattle. I even named some merch after you, you braj. Peter, look at me when I'm talking to you. One day, we're gonna team up and drink an endless amount of pints 
and get lost in each other's eyes. But that's not today. Stoked to have this yeast. There's not too many people I know from San Diego who've messed around with it. I texted Peter for any advice and he said, ferment hot. So I'm gonna do my best to keep it above 85 degrees. Some of their Kvike yeasts are geared towards West Coast IPAs. Some of their yeasts are geared towards tropical esters that I would use for a hazy. But this Lutra is supposed to be ultra clear and clean. So much that people have made pseudo lagers with it. All I know is that I'm in. Barrage Lord Trevor brought to my attention a four day Lutra seltzer recipe that's catching some steam on the internet. Trevor brought over a pineapple hard seltzer on last Wednesday. Wednesday's virtual happy hour. It was delicious. It was the best homebrew one I've ever had, but it was also the only homebrew one I've ever had, but let's give it a go. I was looking at the recipe and it requires a proper seltzer yeast nutrient pack. That's 28 grams. That's one ounce. That's a fuck ton more than any other recipe I've seen on the internet. Again, I couldn't get this proper seltzer nutrient in time for this video. I'm just lucky that I have the yeast. So I gotta improvise. I have no idea what they actually put in their yeast nutrient, but I do know what yeast nutrient is. It's DAP, diammonium phosphate, what we've been using. A salt that provides nitrogen to activate yeast. Yeast holes, or dead cells, that acts as fatty acids for new yeast. Magnesium, zinc, other vitamins, vitamin B. The bottom line, is that I gotta go off the fly. All I really know is that they recommend almost five times the amount as all the recipes I've been going off. But let's light this crowd candle. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm used to that. But let's just roll with it. Let's go ahead and use 20 grams of yeast nutrient and let's use 80 grams of diammonium phosphate. And that's the whole enchilada right there, Baraj. Five gallons of water, it's filled up to 200. It's same as before. Now we're gonna weigh out four pounds of dextrose. But here's where I screwed up. Here's where I screwed up. And this is something that I learned for this video is that there's more fermentables in cane sugar than there is in corn sugar. So I used four pounds for the first two batches and then four pounds for this batch, but I should have done like four and a half to five pounds of corn sugar. There's more sugar, there's more fermentable sugar per pound in cane sugar than there is in corn sugar. Correct, final answer. That was a bummer because my final gravity for this batch was like 1033. So I screwed up. It's gonna be about a 4% social sparkler. But you had four and a half or five. You learn from other people's mistakes. And another thing is I did the temperature control wrong. I, it's super cold right now and I just had it in my tub. If I crank the heat all the way up, I can get my DIY temperature control to 90 degrees. But then you gotta drain the water, you gotta fill it up. You gotta drain the water, you gotta fill it up. I did that for four days. And if I were to do that all over again, I would just put a, a heat blanket around it and put it in a chest freezer or something. But hindsight's 2020, and I'm just being honest. You'd always rather be honest than political. And after four days of fermenting, we pulled a reading and we hit our gravity. 4% Lutra hard seltzer. It's as clear as water. It looks just like a White Claw, Truly, or LaCroix. This yeast is amazing. Definitely less is more with these bad boys. White Claw only uses a hint of extract. They all do, it's just a hint. If you use too much, it's gonna be overkill and it's gonna taste like vodka and it's gonna burn your mouth and sting your tongue. Start with a half ounce or a tablespoon and work your way up. Close your lid up, shake it up. This is why you wanna use extract. If you use fruit or puree, a lot of it's just gonna sit to the bottom. Plus it's gonna be way more expensive. Extract dissolves way better. We're not making juice, we're making a white claw clone. So this is it. This is after I force carved and my cold crash did nothing to the cuvee yeast. And I didn't, uh, I didn't carb the sake one. And here is the Lutra. Here's the Lutra right here. And cloudy or not, it tastes delicious. It tastes just like a white claw. I mean, other than the flavor, vanilla versus key lime, I don't know how to tell them apart. This video, uh, that's that cricket in here. This video turned out super well. The reason I wanted to do that turbo yeast is because one of the best white claw clones that I've had at a brewery, they do use turbo yeast and they did not want to be named. They did not want me to say which brewery it was, but that's what they do. They make their hard seltzers with turbo yeast and then they use a carbon filter 
and it sucks everything out of it and it ends up looking like that. But we're not gonna talk about that. We're already way too deep in too many things on this video. If you guys watch the broadcast happy hour tomorrow night, I'd, I would love to talk about carbon filters.